Welcome to Extraordinary League, an actual play RPG podcast brought to you by Smash Fiction. I'm Dan Mulcairin, your Game Master. Playing Stitch is Kit Mulcairin. Oh shit, we were supposed to have something to say again? <laughs> Playing Morden Solis is Colin Mulcairin. Don't worry, I didn't come up with anything either. <laughs> playing Dante Sparta is Liz Logan. Hi, I'm Liz Logan playing Dante Sparta. You guys all suck, <laughs> just so you know. Playing Sterling Archer is Miles Schneiderman. Because how hard is it to roll a goddamn die properly? <laughs> Not all of us have characters that have just this awesome, endless repertoire of quotable lines. <laughs> that sounds like your own damn problem. <laughs> and also, I have dice this time, by the oh, way. Oh, good. Yeah, that's right. Somebody leveled up. How much oh, I was I was liking shit. doing your Foley work. You only did it like twice, so I couldn't rely on you. <laughs> so, uh, previously, you all had been kidnapped by some strange alien skeleton arachnid cyborg creatures who were uh, doing experiments on you in order to quote unquote complete you. You managed to escape uh, after they came under attack and uh, actually found the people that were attacking them, which was a group of rather eclectic, largely humans ish that you managed to save in turn from an ambush by these strange alien creatures. So, uh, now the two groups are facing each other across the ruins of a London mall uh, amidst the bodies of the fallen creatures that you've taken out. And uh, one of them, the uh, blonde woman with the ponytail and the red axe, just uh, told you to come with them if you want to live. What do you do? Hi, Sterling Archer. <laughs> Secret agent. She nods and says, Buffy Summers, Vampire Slayer. Yes, absolutely. I'm, to I'm totally into that. <laughs> She sort of uh, looks over the four of you and says, um, I'm guessing by the drying green goop on you that uh, you recently got out yourselves? I, it was absinthe. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I tried to get it off, but, you know, absinthe. It's, it's, I, uh, kind of, I it's gently, kind of European. I gently shove Archer away and I'm like, yeah, it's uh, my new uh, muscle gleaming oil. And uh, oh, God. <laughs> we just came over from uh, that away. Ugh. Equally oh. varied group of individuals, primarily human, but this one is clearly some sort of mecha, also fighting against our captors, most likely similar to us, also experiments. Identify yourselves. The large guy in black leather with the sunglasses and the giant gun swivels his head with this weird precision and without, like, moving any other muscle in his body and just says, uh, Cyberdyne System Series 800 Model 101. And uh, Buffy chimes in, oh, we just call him Terminator. Rolls off the tongue a bit easier. Stitch, uh... Oh, crap, another cyborg! Get it! <laughs> <laughs> Stitch uh, runs up the Terminator's body, perches on his shoulder, snatches the sunglasses, and puts them on, kind of turning <laughs> to where the camera would be, and just goes, ooh. <laughs> Seriously, this guy is half robot, and I've had bad experience with those things. Somebody shoot him. The little kid with the goggles and the backpack... Says um no it, it it he's he's fine he's he's not with them or anything he's he's kind of scary looking but he's he's good people I mean that's what they always say until they screw your girlfriend and throw you off a building. <laughs> uh, you notice by the way that uh, the Terminator has turned his head to look directly at Stitch with his uh, single glowing red eye. Please return the sunglasses. Dan, Dan, come on now, dude. Listen, the I got sun... a lot of voices to no. do, all right? No, 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 it's not the voice. Okay. It's the line. All right. You gotta oh yes, the, your sunglasses. The, the sunglasses. <laughs> Give them to me. <laughs> or my sunglasses, I guess. Yeah, my, my sunglasses. sunglasses. Give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh -uh. <laughs> the the Terminator looks a bit out of sorts and glances over at the woman with the pointed ears with a questioning look on his face, and she just sort of shakes her head, and he looks somewhat disappointed. <laughs> The little kid steps forward and says, uh, I'm Raz Putin Aquato, but you can just call me Raz. Oh, that's who it is. Oh, Dan, you're the best. Uh, I rather oh. so. I'm, so, I'm still I'm gonna so be like, when myself, who the fuck I are you? I just intro, I mean, Raz Putin, you can call me Raz. Raz, blah, 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 what? Just Raz is fine. Thanks. Blah, 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 blah. Who? Are you about to overthrow the Russian Empire? You got a problem with the I mean, I, I wasn't, wrong with you? I wasn't intent, no. I Say what you want about that regime, but they kept order. <laughs> And nothing got better after they were gone. Just saying. I, yeah, I started scanning everyone with my Omni tools. Uh, 
Uh, you read too few. Are you looking for anything in particular, Morden? Any injuries or anything like that? And I'll, I'm doing it under the guise of looking for injuries, but if I notice anything else interesting, I will file it away. Your scan of the Terminator confirms what is super obvious, that this guy yeah. is like... That he's got a great leather coat. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say that he's Austrian. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's clearly an android with some sort of like living flesh covering for the yeah, record I, leather I, coat. <laughs> the flesh covering yeah no, um, that's, that's dead flesh covering liz close enough the woman with the pointed ears looks at dante and morden and says um and you would be uh once uh, again your mom. Archer, secret agent we can talk more about that at the bar is there a bar around here because I think we all need a drink, yeah? Who needs a drink? Buffy says, uh, there's bars, I'm sure, but probably nothing you want to drink. This place looks like it's kind of run its course, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I mean, you'll get to know me soon. Uh, the, the woman with the pointed ears says, why aren't the two of you answering my question? She's looking at uh, Dante Do and Morden rather suspiciously. Forgive me, just attempting to assess all of you. Dr. Morden Solis, I extend a hand towards her. She nods and sort of, like, extends her hand, but, like, not for a handshake. Like, she sort of extends her hand with, like, the palm facing downward. Um, <laughs> and uh, she just says, Princess Zelda. Whoa! <laughs> I just give her hand <laughs> Is that it, Liz? On top. <laughs> Princess! Whoa! She, she looks pointedly at Dante, doesn't say anything, just, like, quirks an eyebrow. I'm, uh, I'm the, the uh... uh, uh. <laughs> I'm the Prince of Darkness. Uh, they call me Dante. Lovely to meet you. I like flip my hair a little bit. I'm like, <laughs> I understand. I yeah, understand I'm pretty important around shift. here. Uh, yeah, I'm the strongest one here. I have the biggest sword, biggest guns, and uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. Dante, you definitely want the the pointy-eared one. Then that's fine by me. I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. In the meanwhile, Stitch has noticed his reflection in the bumper of a broken-down car. Realizes that he looks fly as fuck with these glasses <laughs> on. And has started uh, posing at himself. Yeah. This does not appear to be a secure location. Buffy says, my thoughts exactly. She glances at the Terminator who nods and reaches down and picks up like this large like duffel bag. Sort of like, you know, what army people will carry when they're like, you know, out on camp for a long extended period of time. Uh, with some weird looking like lumpy shapes in it. And uh, she says... Um, my favorite kinds of shapes. Yeah. <laughs> And she says, uh, we managed to grab some uh, important and uh, powerful looking weapons and gear that these guys had raided from other worlds. We don't really want to use them until we figure out exactly what they do and how they work. So unfortunately, our extraction point was overrun and we need to find an alternative. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know all about extraction points. <laughs> she uh, looks over at Raz and says, uh, speaking of how Is that we a double entendre, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> I'd like to double her entendre. It'd be better. Oh, 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 I don't even understand what that... What? A double entendre is less about the actual meaning of the word and more about just, like, the tone in which you say it. <laughs> it's a little bit about the actual meaning of the word. Buffy uh, looks over at Raz and says, uh, Speaking of, how are we looking on the extraction point front? Raz reaches into his satchel and produces a device. Kind of looks like an 80s-era brick cell phone. It has a small rotating parabolic dish on the top of the antenna. He uh, looks at the small display screen on the front of it and then turns and points. And he says, uh, another 460 meters or so that away. And, oh my uh, god, another fucking brainiac. <laughs> <laughs> he just sort of uh, looks at Dante with an air of sort of put upon mysteriousness and says, You have no idea. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he is so charming. <laughs> Zelda says, uh, enough, we should probably be on our way before more of these things catch up with us. Abs absolutely. She and Buffy yeah, begin to uh, move in the direction that Raz is pointing, and uh, the Terminator like and Raz a dive bar along. at this point would be fine. As you guys begin to, to head out, Raz walks up next to Stitch, looks at him and huh? says, those do look pretty cool on him. <laughs> he gives a big toothy grin that looks more <laughs> scary than cute. Raz recoils <laughs> slightly. So, um, are you like a bunny or something? Experiment 626. Like like a bunny experiment? Sure. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Small and fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Dante, as you're as you're walking, uh, Zelda sort of keeps like glancing over at you, <sighs> and she says, "Um, that weapon you carry on your back, what is its nature?" Slaying demons and keeping beautiful chicks like you safe. Is it a holy weapon? Uh. <laughs> Think of it as the opposite of holy, uh, in the sense that it's holy awesome. I see. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the skulls and stuff, you know? We all got bones on the insides. Are you from a world where Whoa. direct conversation is not a tradition? 
I'm from a world where... She says, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy sort of is glancing over at Archer and just sort of nods and says, that's... Oh, great, uh, I get to talk to the robot. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and just says, uh, Scientist. nice turtleneck. Thank you. Did you mean to leave the cap off your pen there? Looking at your uh, breast pocket. <laughs> oh, it, it comes off for just the, no no reason. It's, it's all right. That, that, as a secret agent, as the most dangerous spy in the world, I'm trained to handle these kind of things. You're a secret agent? Absolutely. Oh. I'm the secret agent. Let me tell you about secret agenting. You mean right. he hadn't already told you that? Jeez. She Apparently says, not uh, that secret. <laughs> she says, uh, I've, I've known some operatives. Oh, yeah. Mixed feelings, all I'll say. Operatives are operatives, you know, they're not they're not Sterling Archer. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh so as you as you predicted, Colin, the Terminator walks up to Morden and just says, um, where is the center of your circulatory system? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even That might uh, be the sexiest line we've had so far. That's actually the first thing Dan ever said. Yeah, that's to me. right. In that voice too. <laughs> no wonder you fell for him. <laughs> I say, may I ask why you wish to know this? I do not seem to have a record of your anatomy in my databanks. I wish to update them. I don't see why you require one. He, I'll be handling all of our medical needs. I was not asking for medical purposes. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> so this is, I, I give him, I give him like a, I, I raise one eyebrow. Ah, yes. sexual so this is a is personal building. request? <laughs> Something like that. Well, I'm flattered, but I'm not currently in the reproductive cycle of my species. <laughs> Way past, I think. Terminator looks very confused, as though you guys were having two different conversations, <laughs> and he only now realized it. The path that uh, Raz has been leading you down takes you on this diagonal path cutting across a road and uh, around this walled-off parking lot. Uh, as you emerge from around the concrete wall, you guys can see the looming and unmistakable shape of the London Eye at the end of the street, uh, sitting on the bank of the Thames. What is it, What's like a London Sauron eye? type Am deal, or what? Uh, the London Eye is, it's if like you... It's like, it's, like, it's like up the top of the two towers. It's like the burning, you know... That that would be the Eye of Sauron. <laughs> oh, the, London no. eye of Sauron. the London Eye is a gigantic Ferris wheel that's, like, just across the river from Big Ben. Cool. Yeah, the, that's a horrifying name. The, uh, <laughs> it certainly is. The Eye itself uh, actually hasn't been touched much by the invasion, apparently, but the Thames is almost black with industrial runoff, and it's covered in this oily sheen. I definitely set off a bomb on that Ferris wheel once. <laughs> Did, didn't think they would rebuild it that quickly. But, you know, Londoners, they can be industrious. Sure. <laughs> can I give the river a scan and see what kind of substance that is? I want to walk up to it. You're going to have to get closer, and it, it's it's a little bit of a walk. Are you planning okay. on just walking directly towards it? Um. Yeah, I think I'm going to be doing that. I'll be watching my surroundings as I go, you know, to make sure there's no ambushes. But I think it's worth investigating. So. Okay. Why don't anyone who wants to make an... Uh, you can either make an intuition check with a bonus from perception, or if you wish, you can make an agility check with a bonus for stealth. What about my enhanced senses of hearing and smell? Oh yeah, you can roll on that instead of uh, intuition. Okay, cool. You said agility check with bonus for stealth? Yes. If you wish okay. to be sneaky. Oh, you mean like if I'm going with him? If you are making your way down this road with the intention of not being seen, you can do so with agility and stealth. If you're not, you can roll intuition and perception or nothing. Okay, no, I don't think I would be doing All right, that. All right, great. I'm going to be stealthy. Try. All right. It's Archer, man. He's not stealthy until he needs to be. That would be red. Nice. Uh, I got a green on stealthing. Okay. And Kit? Uh, don't worry about it. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm clearly... Uh, <laughs> I think Stitch has stolen that little doohickey that Raz was holding. That little technological oh. thingy. And is now uh, fucking with Yeah, the, Raz, the Raz is like, you want to hold this? Just be careful. It's very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> As Stitch begins... He's just slamming the it buttons. against the ground a little bit. <laughs> so, Morden, uh, as you're sort of walking uh, in the direction of the Thames, you're about to emerge from a corner. You look around the corner to your left. So the eye is out in the open and exposed. And sort of down the green along the Thames, or what was the green and is now sort of just like the gray and brown, are a number of various uh, invaders. They're not of a type that you've seen yet, but you recognize their design. There's a bunch of them, but they're kind of spread out and not especially close to where you are now. But like, you know, if you emerge out into the open, you would be like well within their line of sight. 
I'm going to hang back and turn to everybody, including our, our new companions, you know, the blonde girl in particular, and say, Which one? what's the best way to get back to your base of operations or whatever it is that you have? Extraction point, dude. Extraction point. Learn the lingo. <laughs> and uh, uh, Buffy says, we don't have, a, well, the best way to get back to our base is through the extraction point. And she looks over at Raz and says, speaking of, Raz finally manages to get the, the <laughs> gadget back from uh, from Stitch, sort of brushes it off gingerly, looks around, looks a little confused, glances back at the little view screen, and then looks slowly up to the top of the London Eye. And he says, um, it's, uh, and Buffy sort of follows his gaze and says, oh, that's awesome. That's just great. <laughs> Yes, I love Ferris wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the extraction point on top of that thing? Buffy says, look, we don't write the rules of interdimensional geometries and physics and stuff. We just got to follow it. I have no idea what you just said. I don't Wink. either. That's the um, thing. So, Wink so are, the, are the enemies between us and the eye? No, but if you approach the eye openly, uh, you will be well within their line of sight. Mm hmm Let's so when you say vampire slayer, I'm guessing that doesn't mean, like, defending innocent people from ambulance chasing lawyers. She sort of, like, looks at you with a blank expression on, on her face and says, what the hell are you talking about? I've never seen an actual vampire before, but I, you know. Yeah, no, sure. Good good time for the jokes. Real good. I'm totally serious. Do you actually kill vampires? <laughs> I mean, haven't lately, but when I have a free weekend. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's cool. Yeah, uh, so is just getting to the top of this thing, apparently. Yes. She says, glaring at Raz as though it was his fault. Uh, well, fortunately, I pull out my grappling gun. Once again, secret agent. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Raz says, oh, that that is, ooh, yes, I am absolutely grappling thingy. Yes, let's do that. There are far too many of us to be able to make a stealthy approach. Perhaps some sort of distraction. Or, uh, I could just fight everyone for you, because I'm the best and the strongest. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, he has. These he was tested in World War II. Pretty... Stitch begins to pick up the nearest car, <laughs> screaming. Uh, some alien. Slowly and quietly picking up the car. <laughs> oh no! It looks like we have our distraction. No, no, he's screaming. Good alien idea. Gibberish, and then he throws it in the opposite direction of the eye. Oh. <laughs> he's he's like, he's like throwing it down like the ravine toward the river. I oh, actually, yeah, let's say toward those assholes. <laughs> okay, so Stitch runs out from around the corner with a, a Volvo held over his head. And just tucks it at the nearest group <laughs> of uh, creatures. Distraction! <laughs> <laughs> and while, while this is happening, I'm going to turn to Zelda and be like, yeah, you see, that's my dog. I uh, adopted him <laughs> off the streets. And see, he, he thinks just like me. I'm going to rip my sword and just go, ah! <laughs> and go straight towards it. All right. Well, so much for the that's, stealthy that's, approach. I think that's my cue for the grappling gun. Yeah, let's, uh, that's a, your cue for initiative. Uh, Stitch. Nine. Morden. Jesus Christ, kid. Every fucking time. <laughs> um, ten. Dante. Uh, six. And Archer. Three. Awesome. Way to go, new dice. I'm going to say you guys ha technically have a surprise round. So, Morden, you may go first. So how many baddies are we fighting? There's are, we, are there in, none really like There's that? none in your immediate area. There's a bunch. Like, from where you guys are standing, you can see dozens, if not low hundreds, within eyesight, but that's spread out over, like, you know, maybe a mile or so. The closest group is maybe about, like, four or five. What's between us and the extraction point? About 450 feet of open air. We don't have to cross the river to get there? No, you're on the same side as the eye, but the extraction okay. point appears to be on top of the eye. Yeah, I guess I'll just start dashing for it then. Good. I'll try to stake out a point of cover a little ways ahead that I can just run and, and duck behind. I'll run ahead and I'll cover you guys as you as you come across. Yeah, I'll so you, you managed to make it about halfway to the eye and uh, you duck behind a turnstile and, uh, you know, okay. pull out one of your weapons and uh, prepare to, you know, provide covering fire to anyone else wishing to make the same journey. Stitch. Yeah. Oh, I just threw a card at these fools. Well, what would you like to do now? Did it get there? Okay, so let's roll your attack for your card. Yeah. Green. Green. One of the creatures turns and gets a Volvo right in the torso and <laughs> is basically just crushed underneath it. So these guys, they look very burly. They're humanoid looking and armored. Or maybe they themselves are just like a suit of black spiked armor. Their forearms and their thighs 
are almost non-existent. The gauntlets and the heavy boots are connected to the torso by this open webwork of thick, inflexible cables. The helmet, or head of the thing, looks blank and skull-like, and uh, it's wielding this gigantic greatsword with vicious spikes erupting from the crossguard. So fun! Super fun. Dante, what are you doing? I am winding up my sword and getting ready, and I've got my hand out, and I'm just gonna be like, Ugh! and then go in for a stinger, and just like my sword's gonna take me along, just <laughs> to the nearest person. Cool. So you do like a like a diving stab towards the nearest one. Go ahead and uh, roll your fighting for me. Okay. Yellow. Very good. You like partially impale this thing and knock it backwards. It is stunned and takes some damage, but it's still alive. Archer. Uh, grappling gun. Okay, so you're gonna have to run up to the base of the eye in order to get within range, and that'll take your whole turn. I can do that. Alright, cool. Archer, along with the other four companions, dart across the open space as uh, Morden begins to provide cover fire in case any of the creatures get any ideas. Most of them don't seem too concerned. They're sort of uh, converging on Dante and Stitch. Oh, they're worried about the car that just got thrown Yeah, for some reason, <laughs> that seems to catch their attention. And the white-haired asshole yes, who's attacking yes, indeed. them. Um, <laughs> Coming from the black-haired asshole. <laughs> hey, I never said I wasn't an it's asshole. It's of assholery. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Right. <laughs> As they run, though, Zelda looks over at the melee beginning to erupt and uh, screams out, Those are crusaders! Don't let them touch you! This is what my sword does, by the way! <laughs> uh, Dante, by the way, you did score a hit, so that means you get to roll for a demon rune. Ah, yes. You can roll a d100 if you want and try to get a 10 or below, or if you want to simplify things, you can just roll a d10 and try to get a 1. Oh, 10% chance. Got it. Yeah. This is a math podcast. Nope. Yep. Okay, no demon rune for you. The creatures turn and uh, begin to lay upon Stitch and Dante. Uh, one of them is stunned, but there are three who are within uh, attacking range. I'm still up on the hill, by the way. Or I imagine a ways away, because I threw Oh, so they're all going for Dante, then. I threw a card. Well, then. I'll help in a moment. Wow, my dog is such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it from you! Not really. <laughs> I was made this way. So, Dante, you bring up your sword in an, uh, an overheaded parry of one of them, but uh, another one manages to jab you, and as you're recoiling from that, another one slices you across the torso. So, you can actually attempt to dodge the first one if you want, but the other one's going to hit you regardless. Okay. Uh, green. Okay, that will uh, dodge that one. So, you just get hit by one of them for 20 damage, and you're going to have to make an endurance check for me. Yeah. Uh, 103? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a 93. Okay, that's good. Uh, so you, um, this thing slashes across your torso and bites into you, and you sort of, like, instinctively brush at the wound, and you see that this black oil sort of comes off it when you do so, preventing the oil Ugh, getting it. Ooh. Morden, we are back to the top with you. So yeah, I need to help a brother out a little bit, I think. Yes. Um, I'm going to incinerate one of the ones that's uh, coming up on Dante. Cool. Also, if you guys wish to direct the characters that are with you, you may do so. They'll be supporting you otherwise, but if you want them to do something in particular, you can uh, ask them to do so. Cool. Yeah, I want to incinerate one of the guys who's fighting Dante. Just... So one of them got hit by him and is stunned. Uh, the other ones are all fresh. Let's see. Yeah, we'll go for that one. The one that's been damaged. Okay. Uh, yellow. Excellent. And that... Takes off four ranks of body Ooh, that armor. destroys his body armor. Very good. Sweet. Well, it, it does technically destroy his body armor in that it also kills him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that that's uh, two well, down. You're welcome. Two down in this current group, three to go, and then a bunch more sort of beginning to run in your direction from down the way. Ooh, we should go. Ooh, it's bad when Stitch says that. Uh, Stitch, it is your turn. There's still one. I'm not the one throwing cars at people. Yeah, <laughs> we should go. Hey, distraction. It worked, right? Uh, In that it attracted their attention to you? Hey, yeah, you guys were Absolute, supposed to run, absolutely. not attack. <laughs> I did. All right, so Stitch, what are you doing? Um, is there still one all up on Dante? There's three of them on Dante right now. Okay. This is a city. Cities have light poles and... Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. ...telephone poles and yeah. such. All right, Stitch so is going to rip one out of the ground. There's those uh, There's those little, like, police boxes and stuff, you no, know? No, I'm going to get a nice uh, pole arm for myself. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you, uh, you, you pull a uh, lamppost loose. And I'm going to swing it at, uh, <laughs> at the three. You want to try to hit all three of them? Sure. Okay. 
make one fighting roll at, uh, I'm going to say minus four altogether. Okay. Dante, jump! <laughs> huh? Jump. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to use karma for this. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a 101. Okay. With the karma, so I, I think I'm good. Okay, let me just... Okay, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Similarly. Uh, okay, so Dante leaps as this lamppost hits all three of them into the river. Just hmm. knocks them like baseballs into the river. <laughs> I knew I adopted you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so those three are gone. Uh, however, you can see that Bursting from the windows of some of the nearby buildings are more of these sort of night-looking ones uh, that land actually pretty nearby the eye and begin moving in toward those of you who have uh, sort of collected at the base, cutting off Dante and Stitch from being able to immediately get there. It is Dante's turn. What do you do? Hmm. So you got- How many? There's three on either side of the eye. So there's six altogether that are closing in. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch behind Dante and Stitch heading in your direction. Wait, so we're separated from the main party? Yes, you are. I want to... Party. <laughs> I want to grab my dog. Okay. And I want to wall jump. Dante has a special thing where he can jump in the air and like a magical platform will form. And I want to jump over the guys <laughs> oh, to to get with the main party. Make a strength roll. If you have athletics, you will get uh, the corresponding bonus. Green. So you uh, you managed to sort of vault over the crusaders that cut off uh, you and Stitch from the rest of the party. You do, however, land pretty much directly in front of them. Oh, cool. Archer. Uh, I'm going to shoot the grappling gun at the extraction point. Cool. You just fire the grappling hook directly upward. I'm going to say it only gets halfway up the eye because I'm going to guess you have less than 450 feet of rope in that thing. That's not on my character sheet. Uh, no, it's not. I'm Plus guessing. The GM gets I, th to I think it's. I think it's infinite. You think it's infinite? <laughs> yeah. If it's not listed, then it's infinite. That's right. It's like if there's not a price on something in the store, then it's free, right? So oh. you have. So then you have oh, zero. Rope. Everyone who's ever worked in retail who's listening right now just shuddered and now hates you. Yeah, wild. just shot their iPod. <laughs> <laughs> so by that logic, then you have zero feet of rope. I mean zero, but also all of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a quantum problem. I see. So you have Schrodinger's grappling hook. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so the Until good he checks no, that's, inside and that's, sees how much rope he fine. has. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. man. So you shoot the rope up, and with your infinite rope, uh, you hook it onto Saturn's moon of Titan. Unfortunately, it's <laughs> beginning to move, and soon is, you know, not pointed in the direction you were hoping. Oh, not that quickly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so you, you manage to hook it onto, like, the big sort of central spoke of the London Eye. So that's uh, that's where it is. And the, hey, uh, illegal aliens and Hitler youth, get over here! <laughs> the Crusaders are beginning to close in. Three of them are going for Dante, because he landed directly in front of them. Stitch, who was within- What can I say? I'm the star of the show. Stitch, who was within Dante's, like, arm, under his arm still, I assume, is just making raspberry noises <laughs> at the Crusaders. Aww. Dante, you're getting hit three times, uh, but you can try to dodge or block all of them. Uh, I will try to dodge. Cool. Oh shit, white on the first one. Good. Red on the second one. Okay. Nice. Red on the third one. Nice. Uh, so the first one hits you, but that only sort of like wakes you up. And uh, you manage to nimbly jump out of the way of the uh, second and third. You do take 20 damage from that first hit though, and you're going to have to make another endurance check for me. Holy shit, another 95. Man, you just don't uh, want this stuff getting in your bloodstream. Incredible 90. Oh, uh, yeah, red. All right. Oh, and then there's three more. One is going to go for Morden. One like is. Hell he is. One, <laughs> one is going for Raz. And one is going to go for Zelda. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm blocking the thing for Zelda. Uh, you, are on the, <laughs> you are on the other side of the fight because you had to leap your way just to, like, be involved in this area. Throw me uh. at the guy. Just throw <laughs> me at him. Oh, yeah. Fastball special me. It's a great move in this. Bob, system. throw me. Uh, Morden, <laughs> you are going to get hit, but you can try to dodge or block it if you wish. I shall try to dodge. Okay. I got a red. Excellent. 
your Solarian reflexes make this guy look like he's moving in slow motion. So you're able to quickly leap backward as the sword whistles through the uh, area where you were a second ago. Zelda actually moves with an amount of grace and immediate agility that you would not have expected from someone who's basically dressed like an actual literal princess. Raz, on the other hand, is not as fast and takes a direct hit from the sword. Oh no. And Raz actually slumps over to the ground. Uh, looks like he's unconscious. Oh shit. Mm. Well, we have to just kill him and leave him. Uh, he's tainted now. It is Morden's turn. I'm going to run over to Raz's side, and the one that incapacitated him, my powers are still cooling down, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to blast him with my hand cannon. Cool. Go for it. Uh, green. Excellent. And what's the damage on your hand cannon? 20. All right. Its armor seems to soak up a fair amount of it. Blah. But uh, it still Only takes it. Morden, as Morden, as you're sort of running out, uh, you hear Buffy uh, yell at your back, grab him and go. We're going to get overwhelmed here. Stitch, it is your turn. Are we just kind of trying to uh, to get out of here? That's entirely your call. Climb, climb the damn rope. I'll just hold for now because I'm basically in Dante's arms, so we're together anyway. Beautiful. Oh, forever. Oh, I, I'm now. seriously considering leaving <laughs> you people, family. Just so you know. <laughs> it means kicking some ass. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, um, so Stitch is holding. Dante? Okay, I am going to wind up as if I'm throwing a baseball. Yeah. And with Stitch in my hand, I'm going to lob him right towards the dude attacking Zelda. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, so, Dante, you're going to be making an agility check. If you have ranged combat throwing, you get a bonus for that. How about athletics? Nope. <laughs> I mean, we could kind of say it's like shot put or something. Yeah. What is throwing Stitch? But yeah. Sport. <laughs> I can be a little ball. If anyone here is going to be a ball, it's you. <laughs> Put my butt in my mouth and roll around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Stitch goes straight into the ground. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I thought I actually assisted that roll. Only if he hits. Oh, okay, I got it. And then you guys get to combine your damage. But, oh. uh, but not I just so want to be like, oh, Stitch, stop eating my fingers. <laughs> it's not food. <laughs> Sorry. Stitch, uh, Stitch actually ends up going kind of wide. I'm going to say that, Stitch, you actually end up sort of like rolling in between some of the uh, Crusaders' legs, and you end up outside the little, like, half circle that they formed around the group. So you were on hold, so you can act if you wish. So uh, I, I'm now solely separated from the group? Yes. All right, I'm just going to agility my way back to their legs. Okay, uh, go ahead and do agility. You can get a bonus for acrobatics. If actually, you where am I in relation to this eye? So basically the way it works is there's the eye. The heroes are directly in front of it. Mm -hmm. Surrounding them in sort of a semicircle are these crusaders. You are on the other side of this little, like, wall of crusaders from the heroes. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to climb up on it and vault off of it. Okay. Vault? Is that the right word? Yeah, sure. That'll work. Spring leap. Whatever. Uh, so I'll say that's actually going to be strength with a bonus for uh, athletics. Okay, cool. Oh, no go. It probably catches me. Yeah, I'm going to say it reaches up and sort of grabs you. Uh, you guys can see uh, at this point that there's about eight more of these crusaders that have gotten to the point where Stitch and Dante were fighting them a little while ago when Stitch knocked them off into the river. And there's more behind them. Uh, you guys can also hear what sounds like big wing beats coming from somewhere in the sky. Archer, it is your turn. Is anybody climbing the rope? Uh, if you wish to direct the NPCs, you say yes. you may. NPCs, climb rope. Let's go. Come on. Chop, chop. <laughs> All right, so... Um... I hope that he really calls them that. <laughs> so Hey, you... The fucking cyborg, get up there. He yeah. he sort of looks at the rope, looks over at you and says, um, has this been weight tested? <laughs> Just go. He shrugs and sort of, uh, you know, throws his, his mini gun over one shoulder and the giant army bag over the other and uh, begins climbing up hand over hand. Buffy is sort of like, you can tell hesitating to go because she's, she's looking at uh, where Raz is lying unconscious and uh, she looks at you puts uh, a hand on your shoulder and says, just make sure that he gets up, all right? <sighs> Fine, go. She uh, turns and begins climbing as well. Zelda, you see, sort of glances up at Terminator and Buffy climbing and then looks over to one of the big uh, capsules that, you know, people would sit in as they go around the eye and uh, crouches down and is enveloped in this sort of like green visible wind she then disappears and then reappears in a similar swirl atop one of the capsules she's okay. going to start teleporting her Good way job. to the top she can do that so i'm assuming i have to keep holding this thing right no you don't necessarily have to 
Okay. I assume you can um, probably just like detach it or just like sort of leave it hanging. Okay, cool. You probably want to tie uh, it off to keep it from swinging around. I th I'm going to go ahead and assume I already did that considering I spent a whole turn. Yeah, that's fine. Last time. That's fine with. So what's the Raz situation? He's lying unconscious in between Morden and the Crusader that took him yeah, out. Yeah, I said I went down to his side, so I imagine I'm kneeling next to him. Is he in immediate danger? The Crusader could hit him again if you wanted to. Okay. Morden is probably the more appealing target. And how far away is he from me? I'm going to say he's about 20 feet away. So, okay, how long I was, would it, I was acting under the impression that I was protecting him. That was the whole reason I did this. Okay, yeah, so you, you're you trying to draw the attention of the Crusader away as best you can by, like, actually positioning okay. yourself in front of... If you're drawing the attention of the creature, then I'll go grab him. Does that sound all right? That's fine, yeah. All right. Cool. So, Archer, you sprint over to behind Morden and just sort of, you know, reach down, and as gently and quickly as you're able to, you uh, get Raz into a fireman's carry. Yes. All right. Uh, it's the Crusader's turn. So, Morden, I'm going to say two of them close with you, and they begin swinging at you. Okay. And neither one of them get even close to hitting you. Again, you're just sort of, like, darting around faster than they seem to be able to follow. The hell kind of science did you study? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say there's science three, of kicking ass. three of them attacking <laughs> Stitch. Did you actually just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Colin, you're the best. It's more of an art, really. Uh, Stitch. They only give degrees in one, asshole. <laughs> Stitch, three of them turn around. One of them jabs at you, uh, but ends up just sort of hitting the ground in front. But the other two bring down their swords faster than you're able to get out of the way, and both of them hit you. Uh, you can try to block both, but you can't dodge either. Okay. Blocking is just a strength roll, right? Yes. Okay. Wait, am I still injured from the last time or no? Yeah, you would have been. You would have no endurance heal? No. Okay. Well, that's a green on the first block. Looks like a yellow on the second block. Stitch, you actually managed to, one by one, catch both of the blades and sort of, like, throw them off of you. Uh, so they, <laughs> they don't manage to actually hit you. I'm gonna say, um, oh. my second set of arms has come out now. Oh, nice. I'm a little antenna, and I'm pretty <laughs> pissed off looking. And then, uh, Dante, one of them is going for you. Uh, but you managed to parry it and, uh, sort of knock his sword aside. Morden, we, we are back. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest that you guys all get the fuck up the eye <laughs> now. That's I'm my not suggestion. I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's cool. I'm just letting you know that on my turn, I'm going to freaking retract the rope so I go flying up there. So. Morden, it is your turn. So Stitch and Dante are down, are still down on the ground fighting them off, right? Uh, that is correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to start climbing up the rope. Can I climb partway up and also attack, or is that not possible? Uh, you may do so, but you'll be attacking at a penalty. Okay, I'll shimmy part way up, and then I'm gonna cryoblast one of the ones that is fighting Stitch because he just got injured. So I think he needs a little bit of assistance. All right, go for it. I got a green, remarkable ice damage. Target must make an endurance check or be like slowed or frozen or whatever. An endurance check, you say? An endurance check. All right, cool. endurance. So, uh, Stitch, the, one of the ones who was uh, swinging his sword at you suddenly like seems to slow way down. <laughs> this layer of frost just covers him. And so, Morden, you are climbing up. Uh, Stitch, it is your turn. I'm going to just try and agility past all of them. Okay, go ahead and uh, make your agility roll. Bonus for acrobatics if you have it. Oh, come the fuck on. <laughs> nope. Okay, you start running through their legs, but one of them, like, swings a sword right down in front of you, and you have to, like, skid to a halt, and you try to move around, and they get in your way, so you're still sort of uh, stuck in this circle of them that's closing <laughs> in on you. Dante, it is your turn. I am going to try to pick Stitch up again and run to Archer. So Stitch is on the other side of this wall of Crusaders from you. Uh, so you'll have to get through them somehow. Get through oh, or past them. God. Uh, magic? <laughs> I know, I was like, how can I spin this to be magic? I don't think I can. Can you double jump in there and grab him? Yeah, but that would take more than one turn. Jump, grab, yeah. jump out? <laughs> yeah. That might be too many actions. Whatever. What say you, Games Master? I would say that you could make the attempt, Dante, but you'd be making a check at a penalty in order to move that quickly. Well, let's you know, do we spend it. karma. Yeah, yeah. I'll spend yeah just use karma. karma. It fixes everything. Karma. Uh, so right. are you going to try to jump in, or are you going to try to, like, parkour your way in, basically? Uh, either. Okay, well, <laughs> jumping is uh, strength plus athletics. Parkouring would be agility plus acrobatics. Yeah, I could literally do either. Okay, well, take your pick yeah, and roll it. At the same uh, same level of quality? Uh, no, agility would be better. So I'll do agility. Okay. Cool. And acrobatics. Okay, karma. You're also at uh, minus two ranks. As I said, you're doing this at a penalty. I'm glad I said karma. Yes. 
Well, it's green without karma, but with karma, I'll take it up to a yellow. That's an excellent idea because there's a lot of enemies in your way. How much karma does that take? 26. That's not bad. So uh, bobbing and weaving with demon-enhanced agility and reflexes, you manage to make your way over to Stitch, who's being held off by these things. You reach down, grab him with one hand, and then turn and do a dive roll back through the Crusaders and end up on the other side. It'll still take you another round to actually get over to the rope or back to the eye, though. Archer, it is your turn. I'll wait around for you guys. Um, I'm going to... Am I back at the grappling gun? You are back at the grappling gun, yes. Okay, I'm ready to release that thing at a moment's notice, and I'm going to shoot whoever is closest. Okay, great. There's the six Crusaders that uh, sort of closed in on you guys in the semicircle that are now forming this wall. And uh, off to your right are the ones that have been approaching you from the beginning. There are eight of them. Okay, which ones are closer? Uh, the wall is closer, so the six. The six? Yes. Okay, how many how many shots of my pistol can I squeeze off in one round? Just one from your pistol, but you could uh, you could spray the area with your assault rifle or, oh, you know, true, use a I grenade. Could. Oh, grenade's a good idea. Okay, I'll do that. Cool. Am I going to hit Dante and Stitch if I use a grenade? Uh, if you roll poorly, you will. But uh, if you get at least a green, you won't. Okay, well, I'll spend karma on this roll. Good idea. So that is a what? Agility? Uh, agility and a bonus for range combat throwing. If you Throwing weapons. Yep. I do have that. All right. I will spend five karma. Or no, I have to spend ten. Yep. I will spend ten karma to make it yellow. Cool. And uh, what's the damage on your grenades again? 25 damage to one area. Nice. So that hits all of them. I have some Sweet. Damage to tally up real quick. I'm down two grenades. I'm not sure how many I had, but I'm down two. Is that the record for most people killed in a turn so far by he, one of us? He did not kill any of them. I'm not trying to kill him. Yeah, they, they're so, telling yes. him this isn't the idea. They're definitely softened up. Actually, no, you got a yellow, so I'm going to see if you uh, knock them off their feet. I'm just going to make one roll for that, all of them. Yeah, that's the hope. Uh, so I'll say you knocked half of them off their feet. Okay. So three of them are prone and are going to be spending the round basically getting back to their feet and then trying to get within range. But three of them managed to get to Dante close enough to make an attack. Can I use Stitch as a shield now? <laughs> <laughs> sure. He probably has more endurance than you. Yeah, he, yeah, he makes a pretty decent shield. He definitely has better body yeah. armor. I think he's probably stronger than my force field, so I should just like wear a bunch of stitches around me. <laughs> just clone Stitch? Yeah. <laughs> Dante, you have two hits coming at you. You can attempt to dodge or block either or both. I will dodge. Okay. Yellow. Okay, and the second one? A higher yellow. Dante, you are untouchable. <laughs> I know. Untouchable. Morden, it's Except your... for when it comes to anything with Stitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> straight to the ground. Uh, so, Morden, it is your turn. Cool, yeah. I'm going to shimmy up a little bit more on the rope, and then I'm going to... Keep climbing. <laughs> I'm going to shoot one of the ones that's between Dante and the base of the grappling hook just to try to clear his path for him. Sounds good. Go for it. Uh, is he going to be clear of the rope this turn? Oh, is Morden? Morden, is he going to be off the grappling By the hook? end of his turn, yes. Okay. Uh, I got a white. Okay, so you do not uh, manage to land a hit, but that's all right. There are worse times to yes. There are worse times to fail. Buffy and the Terminator, uh, who have made it up to the the spoke of the wheel, Buffy reaches down and uh, pulls you up basically with one hand and uh, sets you next to her as uh, the Terminator is beginning to let loose with his machine gun on the approaching Crusaders down below. Cool. Oh, God, cyborgs with miniguns. <laughs> Stitch, it is your turn. Stitch, once again, held in Dante's arm. In Dante's strong embrace. Strong <laughs> ma masculine embrace. It <laughs> blinks a couple times with his large eyes. and then How, how does so he smell, Stitch? <laughs> and then, uh... Oh, like pretty, brimstone pretty, and sulfur. Pretty sexy, actually. But anyway, <laughs> that's for me. Whoa! Not for Stitch. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you're ruining my moment! <laughs> no, I want to hear more about how sexy Liz smells. <laughs> uh, Dante! 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey Miles, I'm the one that creeps Liz out. That's my job. <laughs> and I want you to do it more thoroughly. <laughs> Stitch slowly looks up at Dante with a sort of uh touched kind of gleam in his eye. And um he's gonna he's gonna hold a little bit. Okay. Very animated Disney gleam in his yep. eye. Dante, what are you doing? Oh, I look at Stitch and I just go, I know. <laughs> and I'm gonna swiftly spirit myself and Stitch away to uh, the asshole with the grappling gun. Sweet. Up the rope. 
Cool. Dante, you basically, I'm going to say grab on to the grappling gun with Archer as Archer hits the lever and basically retracts the grappling hook all the way up to the mid spoke of the uh, eye. Oh, well, that, okay, well, that works. Do their hands touch? Right. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and now uh, Archer can, can uh, tell what Dante smells like. I'm going to say so I wait. have Archer in a nice big bear hug. <laughs> one arm with Stitch, one arm with Archer. <laughs> Yeah, that works for me. Big yeah. happy family. It's fine. It's not realistic that it would retract under the weight of four people, but it's fine. <laughs> I feel left out I of was, this hug. <laughs> well, I was I was going to say if we wanted to take another turn, then that's all right with me. No, that's fine. It, it retracts all the way up. All right. So yeah, you guys are uh, at the mid-spoke of the London Eye. All of you are standing there except for Zelda, who's uh, sort of off on one of the capsules to the side. And uh, you see she points off into the sky and uh, yells this word of warning. You can see across the streets that are now strewn with all of these crusaders all heading in your direction. There are some shapes descending from the sky. Most of them appear to be creatures that resemble like lizards or dragons, although they only have uh, hind legs, they don't have four legs. Their main bodies are the size of an SUV, and then their tails are at least three times as long. The whole body is made out of metal and is kind of skeletal in shape, including the tail, which is made entirely of vertebrae. Uh, the only pieces of flesh that it has are grafted onto its back, where it stretches upward into these hideous, rotting wings. I just want everyone to know this is not my best day ever! <laughs> <laughs> there is, however, one descending from the sky, which is about... It stands about 15 feet tall. It's humanoid. Its upper body is considerably bulkier than its lower body. The whole thing looks like an animated suit of mechanical armor made of corroded black metal. The head slash helmet features a pair of round glowing red eyes. Uh, the only thing on it that looks even remotely organic are the large bat-like wings that stretch from its uh, shoulders. When Buffy sees it, she says, Ah, oh, crap on a cracker. They have a devouring Strassus. We got to get out of here now. Hey, somebody mentioned that in the, you know, the computer. Buffy glares hey, at you and says, oh and you didn't think it pertinent to mention it to us? What the hell is a devourer? What, what is a strosis? It devours and, and any nature. things. And you know what? We got to get out of here. Uh, so how much time do we have before they get here? A lot of the crusaders are already at the eye and they're actually beginning to climb up it. They're just okay. like scaling the cables. Fuck it. Grappling gun again. All right, cool. Well, uh, let me see. So that was... Technically, Dante's turn, because he was on, uh, and Archer was on hold, and he just acted, so the Crusaders are climbing. I'm going to roll in the Strassus and the Drakes. Okay. I just looked it up. It is a 9-9 nine -nine with flying and trample. Sure oh, is. Lord. Sure is. No, I know. I know. The other creatures, by the way, if you wish to look up their pictures, uh, are Phyrexian Crusaders and Dark Steel Drakes. It's Magic the Gathering, everyone, if you haven't caught on. Hey, you Magic play. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> We've already done a whole episode called Escape from Phyrexia. Not everyone Not knows what Phyrexia. Everyone knows what Phy yeah. I could have made that up. You don't know. <laughs> and if I claimed that, I would get sued by Wizards of the Coast, so no, I didn't. Dan, this is smash fiction. None of us make anything That's up true. ourselves. Except for and our arguments. Well, yeah, sometimes. Totally I up. look like I'd be friends with these guys. Yeah. I mean, kind of, except they're, they're very black-themed and you're less so. What are you uh, talking about? He's half demon. I'd say Dante's red black. The, the, the white hair. Yeah, demons are uh, often have white hair in Japanese mythology. N nothing about Magic the Gathering is Japanese except the Kamigawa set. Hey guys, it's Morden's turn. How about? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Morden, what would you like to do? Oh, I just cryo blasted. I was gonna say I need yeah. to incinerate that devouring straw yeah, as much as possible because cool it probably right? has armor. Cool oh no, I gunned last turn. Oh yeah, that's right, you did. I gunned. Huzzah! Let's incinerate the devouring strassus. Cool. Please green. All right. The time it takes for the projectile to hit this thing really just sort of emphasizes how big this thing is as it's making its way toward you. Uh, but you do manage to nail it in the chest. Oh, this one is, you said 15 feet tall? Yes. That was my guess looking at the picture on the card. <laughs> Stitch, it is your turn. So what if Stitch uh, jumped out of Dante's arms, clamored, No! <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Clambered, uh, you know, over to say one of the uh, the carriages, the the cars that hang from mm -hmm. Ferris wheels, and ripped it off and threw it at these guys. Yeah, you could uh, you could certainly try for it. All right. Who do you want to try to throw it at? Do you want to try to throw it at the Crusaders that are climbing up? Do you want to try to throw it at one of the Drakes in the air or at the devouring Strassus that's approaching? <sighs> I would probably more easily hit the things that are climbing up, huh? 
Well, yeah, because then you yeah. just have to drop it, and they would be less yeah. maneuverable. Okay. That's worth doing. I'll let the other people handle the air stuff. Okay. Just uh, agility? No, uh, roll me your strength to pull this thing loose. Okay. After you have it loose, you can just drop it on them. Oh. That's a green. Okay. So Stitch plants his feet on a couple of the cables and pulls up one of the capsules, which is like about half the size of like a subway car, and then just turns and sends it hurtling downward, basically knocking off four of the Crusaders as they're climbing up and flattening them in the process. Dante. So do, if we get to the rendezvous or extraction point at the top Thank of the high. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> do we get beamed up somewhere or what, what's supposed to happen? Are you asking someone in character or are you asking me? I was asking you. Well, you don't know. You could ask someone um, in character. They might I'm going to ask Buffy because she seems smart. So should we be getting to the top of this thing as fast as possible or should we be doing some awesome fighting? You know, I need oh some direction God. here. Oh my God, break your Nazi brainwashing. <laughs> <laughs> she says, listen, if you have some sort of secret weapon in that red trench coat of yours that can take out this city full of alien invaders, be my guest. But if you can't, then we need to get to the top so we can get out of this world. It's actually not in the trench coat. It's in the pants. Uh... <laughs> She sort of just like look, gives you that same flat look that she did earlier and says, oh, terrific. Terrific. <laughs> so what you're saying is we need to get to the top as fast as possible. That was what I was saying, yes. All right. Dog, get in my arms! <laughs> <laughs> so I want to grab Stitch and I want to- I can't, I've already acted. Yeah, Sti Stitch, is, uh, <laughs> Stitch is way off to the side on this thing. I'm like, all right, well, just follow me. You know, like dogs do. Uh, okay. And I'm going to start wall jumping up the eye carriages. All right, cool. So yeah, you leap onto the nearest one and uh, begin jumping up as far as you can. Uh, go ahead and roll me strength plus athletics for that. Yellow. Excellent. Uh, you managed to uh, make your way a fair distance up the uh, rest of the, of the way up the eye. Uh, next up is, ooh, the drakes. All right. There's two of them that are pretty close by. Don't get by. too excited, Dan. Oh, I'm very excited. Uh, there's two of them that are pretty close by. They uh, begin to swoop down toward you guys. Let's see. One's going to go for Dante, and one's going to go for the Terminator. All right, well, so Dante, you managed to sort of, like, throw yourself flat against the capsule as the Drake's mouth is snapping above you. But those of you guys that are still standing on that center spoke of the wheel, there's this Drake that's like flying directly towards you with its mouth wide open. All of you sort of feel this shove as the Terminator pushes you to the ground. And then you hear this giant snap as uh, you see the jaws of the Drake close around him and yank him off. Uh, what? So the Drake is in the air with the Terminator in his mouth Beginning to pull away. It, it hasn't yet, but it's beginning to. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. Archer, it is your turn. Looks like you got your wish, asshole. It'll be fine. He can fall from long distances. <laughs> I'm going to grappling hook up to the top. Okay. I'm guessing you're doing what you did before where you just extend yes, it yes. without retracting it. Yes. Cool. And you tie it off, I imagine. Well, who's left? So, okay, so Terminator's being pulled off. Yep. Dante is jumping up himself. Yep. Stitch can presumably Stitch is, do that too. Uh, kind of hard to tell. Stitch went and threw a capsule, so he may or may not be fending for himself. Zelda keeps on teleporting. So basically, you're on there with Morden and Buffy and the unconscious Raz, I think is everyone. I kind of just want to grab Morden and Buffy and retract. Well, that's, uh, that's what you uh, could do. Morden, what do you think? Contemplating whether or not to go after the Terminator. I would like to do a giant heroic leap and land on the Drake's head. But at the time, it's a robot, and I don't think Morden cares. I think if it was not, if it was any other character, Morden would definitely do it. But I don't know how much he values a robot. I'm going to retract with Morden and, and Buffy. Cool, so you, you just sort of, like, grab... Since it carried four before, yeah. yeah. So you grab onto both of them and start heading upward. Morden doesn't care for the record, but Colin is very sad to leave the Terminator behind. Yes. Buffy is screaming at you, Archer, and saying, What are you doing? We can't leave him! The Crusaders are going, but they're, like, the Crusaders are way behind you guys by this point. They're just, like, not nearly as fast as your various means of uh, ascending this wheel. The Strassus has now completed its move action and will be able to attack you directly next turn. Uh, as it's been going, by the way, it occasionally, like, picks up a random Crusader and just, like, throws it into the gaping void in its helmet. Nice. And, you know, devours it and uh, seems to heal itself when it does so. Oh, that's right. They have to sack creatures to stay on the field Correct. or something. 
Uh, yeah. Morden, it is your turn. You are now at the top of the eye. Okay. Now you can do something if you want to. Yeah, I, I think uh, making the hard decision, Mass Effect moment style, about whether or not to go after the Terminator, and I think I'm going to leave him to die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to take a shot at the Strassus with my Shuriken. Okay. And I'm going to spend Karma. Go for it. Well, it's a good thing I did because I got a terrible roll. All right. I spend 70 Karma to make it a red. Excellent. Oh my God. What's the damage on that? Jesus. Uh, it deals 25 damage when I get a red. I thought you put everything you had into advancement. I started off with 100 Karma. Morden, you get a very nice little concentration directly in that same gaping hole in the Strassus' helmet, and that seems to hurt it. It actually falls back and seems momentarily stunned. Uh, Stitch! All right, I can see the group's trying to make a break for it, right? Yes, they are zipping to the top. All right, he's... Uh, you also do see that the Terminator is getting carried off by one of those drakes. Ooh, rough. Um, hey, hey, you Stitch, might, you might is, care more Ohana about robots. <laughs> <laughs> he's not my family yet. <laughs> he didn't hold me lovingly in his arms. <laughs> But he's John Connor. Thank you. <laughs> he doesn't smell of Old Spice and Brimstone. <laughs> Old Spice. <laughs> I don't know. I think he. I think Dante's more of an axe kind of guy. Yeah. I was like, oh God. <laughs> I think Dante just like picks up badgers and rubs them directly under his armpits. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, uh, Stitch is gonna go uh, agilely climbing and jumping up. Up, 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 toward to where uh, the group is trying to meet. Okay, go ahead and give me some strength plus athletics. Oh, yeah. That's a 93. All right. Uh, Stitch has made it to the top of the eye. Zelda has also made it to the top through her teleporting. Buffy and Zelda are sort of arguing with each other. Zelda says, Buffy, we don't have any time. We have to get this back to base. Buffy says, we can't leave him, though. Zelda sort of looks around at uh, Morden and says, uh, you, you're good with machines, right? Not my specialty. Look, this gadget thing that we use to travel dimensions, it, it's not supposed to be able to take this many people. Someone's gonna have to overcharge this thing if we're gonna get out of here altogether. Give it to me. I grab it and I scan it with my Omni tool. Okay, uh, you can do that on your turn. Dante, it is your turn right now. So Dante has this ability where he can charge Rebellion, and he can attack faraway targets with, like, sword strikes. Okay. But they become, like, projectiles, but right. it's with the power of his sword. Okay. So I want to try that. All right. What are you going to swing at? The Strasses. Okay. So fighting? Yes. Okay. Yellow. Fantastic. Roll for your demon rune. Oh, yes. The elusive demon rune. Yes. Oh. Two. No. Nope. So close. Uh, but you do manage to hit the Strasses pretty hard. Good. Okay. The Drakes. Uh, so the one carrying the Terminator turns and just keeps flapping away. The other one circles in a spiral up to the top of the eye and uh, is going to, let's see, I'm going to say it's going to try to grab Morden. No, it's going to try to grab Archer. Yeah, it's going to try to grab Archer. <laughs> First they came for the Terminator and I said nothing. <laughs> yes. For I was not a Terminator. <laughs> That's beautiful. Fortunately, grapples are more difficult to make than regular hits in this system. This thing snaps at you, and you feel sure that it must have gotten you. But you open your eyes and are momentarily relieved to find that it did not get you in its mouth, but then are momentarily horrified to find that it tore your turtleneck. <laughs> uh, Archer, it is your turn. All right, I'm pissed now. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the assault rifle to bear and just unload on this fucking thing. Okay. Go for it. We're still waiting for Morden to finish fiddling, right? Yes. Or if not even begun to fiddle. <laughs> Ooh. That's agility plus range combat? Yes. Because I have guns? All right. So that's a, 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 yeah, that is a yellow. Excellent. Uh, you bullseyed it if you want to hit it anywhere in particular. I'm going to say, like, right into the mouth and through the back of the head, if that's a thing. Uh, it is, and uh, just as what you did with the creature last time, you basically perforate its insides, and the thing Eat this! the thing drops dead out of the sky. Yeah, that sound tasty. <laughs> that tasty. That tastes good. The Strassus has finally managed to get its feet back under it. It takes a couple of large steps toward the eye. It's not tall enough to reach you guys at the top, but you see it just sort of like places one hand on either side of the eye and just begins to push. 
And uh, you can see that the guy wires holding the eye up are beginning to strain and the uh, concrete that they lead into is beginning to sort of like bubble up as it's oh, pushing. Shit. The eye is beginning to creak. Morden, it is your turn. What I the fiddle. Thing the thing? I fiddle. Okay, uh, give me a reason with a bonus for technology. Okay. Uh, I, mm, do we think it's karma time? Is this an important role? <laughs> what do we yes! think, guys? I don't know. Yeah, I'll spend karma. <laughs> Cool. I didn't hear the sound of your dice, going. I'm using a dice roller. Oh, what? how the tables have turned. I know. I didn't... They're in the other room. <laughs> so you got a oh hot chocolate for, hot for dice? I forgot to get the <laughs> dice when I got my hot chocolate. <laughs> hey, Miles, do you want to provide my Foley work this week? Absolutely. Go for it. Oh, I didn't hear it. Do it again. All right. Here's some like, quiet dice. That'll do. Do you have a silencer on your dice? <laughs> I got a red with spending 10 karma. Okay. Nice. You bring out your Omni tool and interface it with this thing and uh, basically begin to selectively turn off some of the safeties while you, at the same time, channel extra uh, energy into it. As you reach... For anyone who's listening, yes, the Omni tool just lets me science cheat my way out of problems. Basically. It's, <laughs> it's basically techno babble as an object. <laughs> uh, once it reaches a suitable point of overcharge, the front of the device pops open and this brilliant white electrical field explodes out in a bubble all around all of you. All of you within feel an intense tingling sensation on every part of your bodies, and then a brief sensation of falling in every direction at once. You hit the floor, and you have a few uncomfortable seconds where it feels like every inch of your bodies had fallen asleep, and Good. are abruptly waking up uh, with all the pins and needles associated with that process. Uh, looking around, you can see that you are in a medium-sized, strange-looking room that seems to feature aspects of both cave and castle. Some of the floor and walls are made of large worked stone blocks, while other parts are more natural water-carved rock. Both artificial columns and natural pillars reach up to the ceiling, which is 30 feet above you, but carved gargoyles protrude out of both the natural and the artificial pillars. The area is lit by wall-mounted torches, although oddly you notice that they emit neither heat nor smoke. As you begin to climb to your feet, you notice that Buffy and Zelda have recovered from the transition much more quickly and have uh, stood up several paces away facing you. Buffy has a crossbow drawn and leveled in your direction, and uh, Zelda has a hand raised. Zelda just says, um, no sudden movements, don't reach for your weapons. Okay. <laughs> Zelda looks over at Buffy and says, um, call for the doctor. Buffy- This guy is a doctor. Buffy nods, although you notice that, like, her eyes are kind of red and watery from having watched the Terminator get carried off by an evil alien dragon. Uh, Dan, just okay. just so you know, for the record, um, with our fan base, don't just say, you know, call for the doctor. Because um, <laughs> I, I don't know what doctor you're planning on bringing in, but you probably just got a lot of people's hopes up, so. Very sure, very sure. <laughs> um, Buffy heads off through uh, one of the doors leading out of this room. Zelda just sort of looks at uh, the four of you impassively with her hand still extended toward all of you. Okay, look, you, what's your name? Morden, right? Yes. All right, you, you want to do something about this guy? Referencing Raz? Yes, the kid. Yeah, I'll pick him up and uh, I'll have a little needle extend with my thing for, of a uh, Metagel and I'll prepare to point it at him, but I'm going to actually hold off on doing it and I'm going to turn to uh, Zelda. Zelda. I say, I can heal him, but you're going to have to trust us. Lower your hand, I suppose. I would say weapons, but it doesn't seem like you have any. But I've seen what you can do, so I'm guessing that your hand will do just fine as one. She looks really uncertain. She says, how bad is he? If I don't heal him soon, then he'll be pretty bad. Yeah, and you know what? He's better than he would have been if I hadn't picked him up and put him on my shoulders and climbed a rope with him. So you can drop the distrustful bullshit. Um, Stitch is gonna walk over to Raz. Mm -hmm. Can he smell anything extra on him? Uh, give me some enhanced senses. Just a green. He has, like, sort of lingering smells of 
the really foul stench of smoke and gasoline that the world you just left had. But that that's about it. It's more like clinging to his clothes and his hair than, like, coming from him. While they're doing that, I'm drawing my pistol and pointing it at Zelda. Okay, she raises Again. up her hand. You see fire begins to wrap around her hands, and she says, You don't want to do this. I didn't say I did, but you want to stop threatening us now. At this point, you see that the heavy stone door swings back open. Buffy walks in first, leading this gangly-looking man wearing a lab coat. His age is kind of hard to place. He's maybe in his, his like, 60s or 70s, uh, but he has, like, this large shock of white hair. Uh, <laughs> I know who I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's carrying what looks like a small metal suitcase in his left hand, and there's a small device he carries in his right hand uh, about the size and shape of a remote control that's attached to the case by a cord. He looks over the four of you with a carefully neutral expression, noting with... More calm than you would have expected, the outstretched gun in Archer's hand. These are the newcomers. And, <laughs> yep, uh, sounds like. Before, uh, before anyone can respond, he sets down and opens up the suitcase, revealing a rather primitive-looking but complex computer of some sort. Uh, he approaches Archer, again, still ignoring the gun you have drawn. He has the, his little handheld device extended. Just try not to move too much. And he begins to wave the device over your body. Well, okay, look, I mean, I've been to doctors before, but this is a little bit different than usual. I mean, are you... Are you try, not to, try not to talk. Is it, is it the prostate? <laughs> he sort of glances at you, glances at the display on the computer monitor, shrugs, and then moves on to more... To if it helps at all, I had cancer once. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in the prostate. While, yep. while he had no real visible reaction to Archer with a gun drawn, he starts when he sees Morden. Greetings! On behalf of humankind, I come in peace and mean you no harm. I hope that our two species can find a mutually beneficial accord. <laughs> I hope so too, but that remains to be seen. Well, yes, tests and everything. You understand. He's waving his device over you. No, we don't understand. But Actually, last night I was in a bar getting drunk on what was... I think now might not have been actually Swiss absinthe. And um, but Buffy says, will you relax? We're making sure you're not infected. I'm going to just, at this point, I'm going to enjoy uh, the crowd with, with the Metagel. All right. By this point, the doctor has apparently given you a clean bill of health, so no one okay. uh, stops you from doing so. Uh, wait, can Zelda inspect me uh, as I slowly <laughs> reveal my trench coat? I'm like, yeah, I got hit right here on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> The doctor rushes over to you, Dante, and begins to uh, wave his uh, device over you. As he does that, I'm going to look at him and be like, Is your name Zelda? He, gl <laughs> he glances up at you sort of puzzled and says, No, her name is Zelda. And he continues waving <laughs> waving the device over you. He apparently is satisfied with he what he gets and he uh, moves over to Stitch. He sort of uh, peers at Stitch curiously and says, What sort of creature are you? As he... Uh, Waves the device over you. He's clearly not paying attention to the readout on the computer when he's looking at Stitch. He's just like, you know, investigating you. Uh, Stitch adorably follows the motion of the, the wand across him, ears like raising and lowering curiously. And then he, he tries to place the device in his mouth. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the, the doctor notices this and, and sort of draws it back and says, Oh, no, no, that, that is not. This is a very delicate piece of machinery. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> After scanning Stitch, he uh, turns to Zelda and Buffy and says, They're clean. They had translator modules installed, but there's no trace of infection. At this, uh, Buffy lowers her crossbow and uh, Zelda lowers her hand and the flames go out on her fingertips. And um, All right, I lower the gun. The doctor turns toward you all and says, uh, Sorry about that. We've had a couple of people who claim to be allies and, well, turned out not to be. He kind of forces a smile past what's clearly an unpleasant memory. Dr. Emmett Brown, pleased to make your acquaintance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sterling Archer, secret agent. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry about your friend. I know he was a robot and thus not technically alive, but obviously he, you know, meant something to you. That obviously was not, was not optimal. But frankly, from what I was seeing back there, we were lucky to make it out with just one person gone. Yes, I know the feeling. I lost a nice jacket once. <laughs> Well, oh, I, Morden. Oh, God. Morden. Raz finally wakes up after your dosage of Metagel, and he looks up at you and says, um, where's, where's Terminator? So just ears <laughs> lower. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Casualty of the fight. Regrettable, but these things happen. Raz's eyes sort of like lower, but he takes it with more like resigned stoicism than is maybe expected for a 12-year-old. Stitch, you have the only thing left of him, his sunglasses. 
All right. I stayed all this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Wear them with pride in honor of our fallen comrade. Uh, Stitch will take them off, slowly walk over to Raz on his hind legs, all cute. <laughs> I could probably just add cute and adorable yes. to anything I do. Yeah, I don't think that's pretty. Uh, that's that assumed. Be <laughs> he, yeah. he, walk, he, he walks up, pads over to, to Raz and slowly hands them over. Raz, uh, oh, Raz, like, huh? Raz takes them and holds them really close to his chest. And he, he just sort of uh, nods his thanks at you. Dr. Brown says, um, Well, I imagine you all must be very tired and confused. Uh, you're free to rest and have some food if you would like, but we can also answer any questions you might have. This has been a trying time for you, I'm sure. I mean, we should definitely do that over drinks. Well, we do have some alcohol here, if that's what you're implying. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Food and drink can come later. I have many questions for you. Well, you're free to ask them if you wish. Cool. I can probably What the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, like that. The creatures that you escaped from are known as uh, Phyrexians. They're mm. strange alien parasites. The homeworld of Phyrexia itself is a parasitic entity that will overlay and absorb other worlds, or what Phyrexians refer to as planes. The world that you escaped was an Earth that was in the late stages of being assimilated into Phyrexia. The An Earth? Yes, one of several. The living population had already been conquered and completed, as the Phyrexians call it, assimilated into Phyrexians themselves. Yeah. The Phyrexians follow some... Was it that London that I got kicked out of? Right. Mm. Oh, it probably was. It was probably... <laughs> you've probably gotten kicked out of more than one London. <laughs> <laughs> I've been kicked out of quantum London. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> the Phyrexians follow some weird twisted dogma which speaks of a day in which all will be one that is absorbed into Phyrexia. The center of this quasi-religion is a figure known as the Father of Machines, although we don't know for sure if this is an actual being or just some sort of object of worship. Uh, the strongest forces that Phyrexia seems to control are five beings called Praetors that act on behalf of the Father of Machines. They are singularly powerful. They were once mighty beings on their native planes, and though they were completed by Phyrexia, they were left enough of their own personality and will to direct the march of Phyrexia while also having their natural powers increased exponentially. Engaging any of the Praetors with anything short of an army is tantamount to suicide. Fortunately, uh, you have found your way to the group which has, well, rather tentatively, admittedly, named itself the Extraordinary League after a comic book that one of uh, young Miss Summer's friends from her home plane was fond of. The League is made up of people who, like you, encountered the Phyrexians either during one of their exploratory missions or as the result of a full-on incursion. Uh, myself and Buffy were the first two members. We were united after we were both taken by the Phyrexians, much as you yourselves were. We managed to escape and evade the Phyrexians for long enough for me to reverse engineer their dimension hopping technology, so we were able to escape Phyrexia altogether. How many more of you are there? Oh, several dozen. Not a tremendous amount. Certainly not as much as we would need to take the fight to Phyrexia itself, but we are doing what we can with the numbers that we have. This is the area in which we found ourselves. The locals of this world refer to it as Castle Grayskull. It's on a world called Eternia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <Yep. laughs> but the castle itself seems to be some sort of dimensional nexus with lines of strange energy crisscrossing from all corners of the multiverse, allowing for relatively easy travel to and from different dimensions. Uh, we make occasional trips to nearby cities in Eternia for supplies, but by and large we use the castle as a staging ground in our battle against Phyrexia. We monitor Phyrexia's path through the multiverse, and we attempt to subvert their progress however we can, but it is tough going, as I mentioned. Our numbers are not exceptional. It seems like an impossible battle at times, but to abandon this battle would mean surrendering to a foe that will strip away everything that reeks of individuality and freedom and to live in a world devoid of hope. So, for that, we fight alone. If you were as useful in this battle as Buffy told me that you were, well, we would hope that uh, you would join us in this fight. Do we have any hope of winning? I mean, it seems as though if this group has already conquered multiple universes, unless we mount a force similar in size, I don't see how we stand a chance against them. Buffy uh, looks at you and says, there's always a way. 
it doesn't matter how strong the force seems, there's always a way to cut them down. It might not be through numbers or sheer power, but there's a way. We just need to find that, it. That is factually incorrect, but... <laughs> Have you or your people never faced down a foe of superior strength or firepower and were able to use your intelligence to win? We have, but that does not mean that all fights are winnable. Ours ended up being, but sometimes sacrifices must be made. Sometimes even that is not enough. Zelda says, we'll make sacrifices if we have to, but if we're not going to fight, we might as well just surrender our personalities and our individuality to the Phyrexians now. Stitch is going to run over to the dock and uh, look up with his little hands together and ask, We can't go home? Doc Brown looks down at you and says, I'm not entirely sure which world you're from. If we find it at some point, we could bring you there, but our ability to pinpoint specific worlds is very limited at this point. I come over and I look at Stitch and I'm like, I am your world now. Oh. You are mine. <laughs> oh, God. Huh? <laughs> I am not comfortable with this. Stitch gives him a sort of. Is a, it weird that I am? <laughs> I, I, he's my pet, you sickos. Yeah. Stitch looks at looks up at Dante that, that, incredulously. That's what they call him sometimes. That is the word. Oh, God. Eyebrow cocked. The <laughs> incredulous <laughs> Stitch. <laughs> Buffy takes a step forward and says, "Look, I'm not going to lie. We need all the help we can get, but you guys don't seem like the sort who are willing to let everything get torn away from you." If you want to join us, you'd be welcome. Everything already has been torn away from us. I don't really see what choice we have. She nods and oh, says, that's see. not inaccurate. Let's I like see. fighting. Uh, no longer uh, working for ISIS and, you know, lame spy agency and instead enlisted to super army to fight off multiverse spanning threat to intergalactic freedom? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone uh, looks at Stitch. I will join to find home, family. Extraordinary League is produced by Miles Schneiderman, with logo designed by Colin Mulcairin. Special thanks to Kevin McLeod for our theme song, which is called Motherload. You can find his works at www.incompetech.com. You can follow the Smash Fiction Podcast on Twitter at Smash Fic Podcast and search for us on Facebook and Tumblr. Subscribe on iTunes, and if you leave us a good review, we shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. If you have any suggestions, feedback, or other contributions, send them to us at smashfictionpodcast at gmail.com and help us continue the fight. Is this on your character sheet? <laughs> well, I gave, yeah. I gave her a wall jump, so... Yeah. Okay. In the game, what happens is he can double jump. He can form, like, a magical platform beneath his feet at the apex of his first jump. Get tensors moving wall jump. Right? Tensors, tensors moving tensors, Sorry, tensors floating. Excuse me. Take a shot, y'all. Um, <laughs> we are already playing a role-playing playing playing game. Yeah. <laughs>